Productions, and uh, I started 40 years ago. Mm. Um, so hopefully not to bore the audience. It's a long story, but I'm going to try to cut it down. Basically, um, my brother-in-law got a camera, and uh, you know he was kind of our leader at that time. You know he was like you know, whatever he did, we wanted to do. And so when he got his camera, um, I, I just like, I'm gonna get a camera too. Mm -hmm. And so got a camera and not necessarily really knowing what to do with it, but uh, I was kind of infatuated with photography. Uh, it really hit me more specifically when I was actually in a play. I was uh, one of the cast member of a play and uh, so it was a multimedia play and uh, now this is film photography, not you know digital stuff or anything like that. So, uh, so the photographers that were there just had all this equipment. I mean, lighting equipment and cameras and stuff. And I'm sitting there, sitting there looking at it. I'm like, wow, that was my, I guess my Oprah moment. Is <laughs> that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is this. That's what I wanted to do. And uh, so. I got the nerve to talk to one of the photographers there, uh, Larry Dockery, uh, and I introduced myself and he said, man, you know, I, 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 I'm just amazed about what you guys do. And he was so he was so kind. And he said, man, why don't you come over and visit the studio? And he gave me his business card and all that. And not knowing that they actually, this was a church play. So I didn't know that they actually attended the church that I was going to. I thought they were just hired professionals. Yeah. And so, but they were actually going to the same church. Um, and so I got the card and um, went to, the studio was in uh, downtown Manhattan. Uh, mid, uh, well, it's kind of, Manhattan is a kind of a weird description, downtown, midtown and so on. This was off of Park Avenue. Went to the studio. The studio was owned by Terry Weir and Phyllis Kewington. And uh, went in there, and that was the moment that changed my life. Uh, Terry greeted me with such kindness, and uh, and we talked. Literally, I was at the doorstep of his studio, and we talked for about an hour before I even went into the studio. Oh, wow. <laughs> but we just, you know, uh, were kindred spirit, and uh, you know, he was obviously older than me. I was a teenager. Um, but th this was a photographer that shot for every international fashion magazine at that time um, from, you know, uh, Italian Vogue to Bazaar and Harper's Bazaar, oh, you name it, he, he'd done it. Really? And uh, beautiful 6,000 square foot studio that they, they had and uh, just, but just so kind. So he, he basically gave me the opportunity uh, 40 years ago to uh, learn this craft. So I hope that that kind of answers the question how I got started. Uh, you know, it was it was it was through that introduction that uh, I was able to further uh, my passion for photography and grow and learn as a as a young man and became an assistant um, to Terry and Phyllis and really more a protege. They were just treated me like one of the family and I was just there in every major photo shoot that they had from Coca-Cola to catalogs to every, I was there I was in the mix and uh, at the, the highest end of, of, of commercial photography and I learned from him and um, he gave me my very first uh, commercial shoot which was uh, Neiman Marcus and Neiman Marcus in New York and for them I was able to Photograph Oscar De La Rente, uh, uh Christian Dior, Calvin Klein, uh, Estee Lauder, 
just so many different des uh, top designers at that time. And, uh, and yeah, that's kind of how I kind of got into it. <laughs> that is crazy. That's a crazy story. I'm about to pause. This. Why, why did you move from uh, Dallas? That's another big question. Uh, uh, I usually tell this, uh, people ask me, how did I came to Dallas? I say, you, you got to be really good friends for me to tell you that story. And uh, we need a drink. <laughs> but <laughs> we got water. But, uh, long story short, you know, you don't, you don't know what God is doing in your life. You know, we're so short-sighted on God's ultimate plan for our lives. And I didn't know the things that I had to go through to get to, to the place where I'm, at, where I'm at today. This didn't happen uh, by, by, by chance. It wasn't with luck. It was purpose. And it was God's purpose uh, that my, me and my family moved to Dallas from New York City you know, through some uh, extenuating circumstances. But basically, the move was just to keep us together. That was, I'm just going to leave it at that. And so, but the move also was to really now finally define who I was as a person, as a man. And, you know, I was, I didn't realize how much I was kind of coddled and uh, uh, set in my my own way when I was in New York City. Because New York City, as big as a city as it is, I felt, you know, I knew that city back and forth. It was my, it was my playground. I, you know, I, I, was able, I was able to get anywhere I wanted to in New York. I, I felt safe in New York. It was my home. And um, coming over here to Texas, I was lost. I, I was a fish out of water, you know, Everything closed at nine o'clock, and you know, couldn't get good Chinese food. <laughs> uh, there's no, no uh, Gucci Frito restaurant out here, which is Puerto Rican restaurant. Uh, you know, there was nothing, 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 nothing. Everything stripped me when I moved here. Everything stripped me to my comfort. All the comfort that I had in New York was gone when I moved over here, and I lost. Basically, I lost everything. Like seriously, I lost. Emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, I lost everything. And um, every year when I was here, the first seven years that was in New York, like in Texas, I wanted to move back. In fact, my sister would, would, would constantly tell me, come, come move, come, come back home. We'll start all over again and all that now. At that, at that time, um, well, yeah, no, I was, you know, I had five kids at that time. And uh, Caleb, my youngest son, who's now 25, okay, that's how long we've been here uh, since then. Um, uh, he's 25. We, I, we had a going away party. And he was just, he was maybe a year old, if that much. He had just learned how to start walking and whatnot. And um, had a going away party, so I moved back. I moved back to, to, to New York. Because I had enough, I was beat down. <laughs> Texas, Texas chewed me up and spat me out. I, I, was, I was done. I was done. I lost who I was as a person. I lost my photography. I lost my desire and all that. But God had different plans for me. And again, this is a longer story, so I'm not going to go all the way to it. Long story short, was I rediscovered who I was. Um, God brought people around me, brothers, mentors around me to uh, to secure secure me as a person and secure me in my, my, my relationship with God. And then I started working on myself. And bit by bit, little by little, things got, things turned around. And I started finding my way in, in the city, in, in Texas and so on. It wasn't easy. But I wouldn't change it for the world because of who I, I am and who I'm still becoming to be. Um, if I was, you know, to, to kind of describe describe this, you know, in the in the in the, uh, in the conversation we're having about entrepreneurism and photography and all that, 
Uh, I don't think you become successful uh, in any of those things unless you know who you are. And, um, and, and that being said, you know, I had to lose everything to realize what was important. And, I, you know, what was important was my family. And um, the reason why I needed to be there was my family. And I was running away from that responsibility. Uh, uh, maybe not consciously, but subconsciously, I, I was given up uh, in the role of what I needed to be as a father. And so um, once I recaptured that, and refocused that, and, and, and I wasn't the best at what I was doing, but I was doing I was doing what I, what, what I needed to do. And so as, as anyone, we give up because we feel like we don't have all the tools to, to accomplish what we wanted to do. So I say this, don't give up. Use whatever tool you have, whether it's, you know, I can write, or I can, I can, I can type, or I can uh, visualize, I can draw, I can draw my brain, or I can draw my ideas, or I can put it down on the paper. I don't have a computer. I don't have this. I don't have a camera or anything like that, but I can. Start writing my, my vision down and start planting seeds so that one day it'll, 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 it'll germinate and it'll, it'll, it'll start getting um, some ground and start bearing some fruit. And so it might take it might take a minute. Like I didn't have, look around, I didn't have none of this. I lost it all. So, so if I can do this and you look around and you see all the stuff that's here, and I'm not all about I'm not about the things. I'm really about the, uh, it's about the, the tools and the experience and all that. Uh, when I didn't have a camera or I didn't have a lighting or anything like that, I just started realizing okay, let me work with somebody that has a camera. You know, let me assist somebody. You know, my my younger brother can probably tell this story, uh, this part of my, my story a lot better. My younger brother's a professional photographer as well, excellent excellent product photographer. Um, you know, he was working at um, a giant studio over here, and I would call him up and say, like, hey, you know, we need another assistant, you know, and uh, so I would assist him. I was doing some heavy lifting work, work. And I was like, hey, I mean, it made me work. But, uh, but I stayed around my, I stayed around my dream. Okay, I wasn't living the dream yet, but I stayed around my dream because I needed to stay close and I won't lose sight. So that, I guess that's, I don't, I don't know if there's three points, but there's a couple of points there that wherever season you might be, it might be uh, a tear down season. I was in a tear down season when I first came here. Six, seven years of tearing down and to realizing who the person I was supposed to be. And then it took another 10 years <laughs> to build up, you know, to reconstruct, you know, the person I supposed to be, you know, and then now at this particular point in my life, I'm not, I'm not, obviously I'm not done or, or, uh, or through, I'm experiencing a lot of those, those relationships and those planting of seeds and becoming a fruition that allows me to now travel all over the country having a, a just amazing experience with these, with, with these commercial clients and so on because of what's happening before, you know. So don't give up. Stay around those. Stay stay close to your dream. You know, you might not be living your dream. Uh, if you recognize the season you're in, whether it's a tear down or build up, and then continue to plant seed because once that opportunity happens, uh, you just got to be ready to move into that. Wow. Yeah, that's powerful. So it's very true. Okay. So, so um, what key advice would you give someone that, that is just starting? You know, we're living in an interesting time, you know, as, as a, a Gen X boomer. boomer. <laughs> You want to call them, you know, I'm like kind of that borderline. You know, generations are different. You know, you guys process the 
generation. Different uh, uh, than obviously in my generation, we had to work our butt off. You know, uh, I'm not saying you guys don't work, but I'm just saying you work differently. And you guys are at Amazon Society. You know, I love staying. I would love to stay in the analog human society where you work with your hands more than the uh, the tools, uh, the digital tools that we have. Accessible. Now, of course, I use digital tools, uh, but what I'm just trying to say is it might be a little different transposed in today's time, but if you're starting out, it's so much easier to, to start out now than it was back in my day. You know, uh, when I started out, there was no internet. Like, literally, there was no internet when I, when I started my argument. There was no digital photography. There was no, there was no social. Cell phones, okay, that, man, that's how old I am, okay. There was no cell phones, there was no digital photography, there was no internet, uh, there was no uh, Instagram, social media, there was no something. This was social media. And you, you got to yell, you got, you literally got to yell, okay, this is my, my, my method, okay. Uh, give me a, here's the phone book. That was, we go, we go down and we start calling and try to say, hey, I'm a photographer. Cold call. Cold call. You call. You got the white pages. In fact, I used to work at a call center. You got the white pages. <laughs> you try to sell some soap or whatever. And we just go through the, the phone book and, and make phone calls. I mean, that's how communication was at that time. I mean, it's a loss. Obviously, it's a lost skill because now we got bots and all that stuff that does all that nonsense, but, you know, you, you learn how to develop your social skills by talking to people. You know, uh, I can I can talk to anyone anywhere in the place. So, if I'm in a building in Chicago to work for a certain client, um, it's called the 30 second elevator speech. You're in the elevator saying, hey, uh, good morning, how are you? Good morning. Uh, I'm here to see so 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 so. Really? Okay, I work on the fifth floor. And I said, "Oh, okay. What do you do?" I'm a photographer. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I do over headshots. Blah blah blah. Here's my card. We will work with you guys in the future. Okay. No internet. No social media. No nothing. We just have a conversation. So, for someone that's starting out and have like no idea. How to connect? Yeah, you connect, you know, to Instagram. You know, we talk about. I actually talk about that in my workshops. You got to show you can do videos. So it's free. You can get on Facebook, show your work, roll your, go get on LinkedIn, get on Instagram, get on TikTok. All these tools that are out there where you can show your work, but it's now so saturated with all this stuff. You know, how do you separate yourself from the rest of the pack? You have a conversation. You go meet people. You go to networking events. Uh, you talk to people in your community. Uh, you, you do more face-to-face -face, uh, communication with this. Oh, let me text you. Or let me, let me just, what's your question? You and all that. Everybody's, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to use those tools, but then you can't lose the fact that I've learned this from my mentors. People want to work with people who like them. So how do you really like you without you know creating a relationship and, and being part of that community or or networking and so on? So oh, yeah, I like that guy. I like I like what Mr. Morris over here. You know, I want to work with him because he has this energy. He has this. You cannot you cannot see that if you're behind post. You cannot feel that if you're behind, you know, TikTok video or whatever. We can see the creativity, but we can't see the person. So, the success, my success, I guarantee 100%, yeah, I get people call me for my website and all that stuff like that, but this business was built on relationships. For pure and simple, built on relationships. Real straight jump right there. Um, you did bring up the elevator speech. 
And uh, just for clarity, uh, what Mr. Omar was saying there, elevated speech is a 30 second speech. Pretty much, um, if you were in an elevator and there's a stranger uh, in the elevator with you, you have 30 seconds to really before you get to any floor that you're on. Pretty much, right? So, what he's saying is, what he's saying is, is that um, how can you build a relationship in 30 seconds? Or how can you tell someone what you do in 30 seconds? Whereas value pack, you guys, you know, trust you when you exchange uh, information. But that's pretty much what the elevator speech is. I uh, brought that up. And uh, you also brought up um, relationship. And I think that's really, really cool you brought that up because I'm just going to understand that as well. Because I thought that, um, oh, yeah, I need to be the best for time I can be, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm just not understanding that uh, people convert with you because of your personality. Work. It's all about, uh, would you say it's all about uh, how you make them feel rather than the work itself? Or would you say, like, you have to do that the time? And now I'm kind of going to the There's a lot of main target person. You're the reason you target for, you know, uh, there's so, so many uh, in our community in Dallas, especially here, it's a great. Uh, uh, Plethora of fantastic photographers, but not all of them are successful because, again, they, they think the work is more important than the person. Um, where I have, I have some of my biggest, largest clients are based on the relationship. They love working with me because they love me, the person. Um, and, um, and they can choose, they, they're, they're astute, they see what you know, I think I'm pretty good, you know. Uh, uh, but I know there's a, a ton, ton better because I know the part of that. Yeah, you could do that. Of course you can. You know, but, but are you me? Do you have the, the empathy and the courtesy and the, the, uh, the ability to converse with your clients and customers? My, well, let me just say this. My clients become my Okay, I work really hard to to create a relationship with my clients so that they become my friends. So that it makes me look, it ain't the one that makes it hard for them to fire me. Uh, uh, but but that we have this bond. You know, I'm I'm, I'm doing uh, this stuff that you saw me on my, my computer. That's for a client that's in Chicago. You know, I I only see them maybe once or twice. A year, if that much, but we have this relationship that we go to dinner together. We're in the same city. Uh, we talk. We know each other's family. You know, like how's your husband? Like this, all this stuff like that. We create this. I, I, when I see them online and LinkedIn, I always uh, celebrate them when they do share a post. That's huge. That's huge. That's part of, part of the, the factors. Since we're all so into our phones, sometimes we're into our own story more than. Clients. So I get, and what I mean by that is like, you know, it's all about me. I can post these photos, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, I post photos, you know that, all that. But when I see my clients post and they're celebrating something, I'm all in there. So they need, they know that I'm uh, 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 a part of their, 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 their celebration, I'm a part of their, whatever they're going to be. I'm a part of that. I'm going to be a part of their, their lives because they, they've given me an opportunity to work with. Them. And so that comes with everything. So when I see them on LinkedIn or I see them on Facebook and so on, that relationship is not just about business. And when, when, when entrepreneurs start figuring that part out, that it's not just about business, it's about relationship, their business will grow. I paid a lot to learn that. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, cool. So now, I'm going to spend a lot of time in so I need to ask a lot of questions. So, um, what's your day today like? Well, the one thing I think about uh, being in this business, every day is different. You know, very, very rarely that I can just say this. 
it's if you're looking for something that's not a routine, this is the industry to be in because it can change like like that. So I might have plans to like I'm gonna edit all day, you know. And, you know that's usually usually the I guess the the drain of uh, if you want to say one thing that's like drain you is editing. We have to do a lot of editing. Um, uh, and no, please retouch. Do not reach out to me because I got retouches <laughs> and stuff. It's, it's one thing about uh, sending stuff out to retouch and do it like mass and like I got 300 headshots. And I'm not going to retouch that. <clears throat> but when I'm doing like editorial work or commercial advertising work, I like to retouch that myself because it's my like art. So, and I like my flair to it. And, you know, but you need there's some amazing new touchers and stuff. But, you know, the, the reason why I get the work that I get is because of the, the people like my, 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 I guess, my touch on my, on my images. So I don't want to ever lose that, you know. Uh, but, you know, so no more emails or, or uh, Facebook messages, retouches. I don't need that. <laughs> um, but uh, my day to day can start. Uh, where uh, it's always about you know returning emails uh, early in the morning. You know, I get up early in the morning and look at my phone and go through my emails, make sure I haven't missed the message or anything like that. <clears throat> I spend time in you know in, in meditation of God's word and just get motivated uh, for my purpose. What is my purpose? Not just to be a photographer. I think my purpose really is about to uh, to help other people live this life. This life might be heavy. This life might be hard. And I think about that all the time. It's like, you know, I've been there. I've been where I lived on someone's couch. That's how I, I, I've been. Yeah, that I was homeless. I've been there. I've been where I didn't, I didn't know when I was going to see my kids again. I've been there. I've been where I, can, I literally didn't know how I was going to feed myself. I've had people uh, leave groceries in front of my door. Yeah, when I was in Dallas. Oh, I was leaving groceries in my yard. <laughs> when I came here, I lost them. <laughs> you know, but I, I, I've, I've had someone gift me a car. Yeah. You know, and that's just to show God's mercy and his grace and you know that there's no one who can tell me that he can't do it because I've seen him do it I've literally seen God take me from day to day to day to day and kept me day to day to day to day and restored things that I've lost and gave me more than I can imagine you know so I'm you know all of that is just to say that that's how I try to start my day, thinking about all of that that he has done and just being responsible and the steward who he has given. And so when I get a client call or I'm responding to emails, uh, messages, and, and then I set my, my pattern of my day where it's going to be a heavy computer day, I'm retouching, I try to get all my retouching. Well, I'll get my, I get retouching every day. I just sometimes have to shoot you for the jobs, stuff like that. So I uh, just stay communicating, uh, stay communicating with my customers, my clients, my friends, um, and about what's going on. And then work my calendar. My calendar could be, well, I'm going to be here. Like I got two locations. Shoot. I got to make sure all the details are there. Uh, I have um, my uh, uh, coordinator, uh, kind of a coordinator. Uh, project manager. I have a project manager for the studio now where they kind of keep me in line. We know what's going on within the studio. Uh, client visit coming, so I got to make sure that's calendared in. Just stuff like that. And so the calendar is really important. Uh, and then the next day might be I'm working on my website. I'm like working on my, my, my SEO. I'm working on, you know, maybe doing a post or two or something like that. I'm always posting on Facebook. Uh, in the first thing in the morning or in the afternoon when I get a break, I post something. Um, and then post on LinkedIn. All that. And go through my LinkedIn. It's just, that's everything. You know, that's every single day. Uh, 
and uh, there are very few times where I have that kind of downtime. I am taking some downtime this weekend. I'm going, to, I'm going there might be a little cold, but I'm going to, I'm going to the, co- the, the coast just to get away and maybe just look at some seagull. <laughs> you know, but you know, you got to do that because, you know, when you're grinding and working, grinding and working, grinding and working, uh, you can get stale, you can get stagnant, you can get, uh, uh, get tired. That, that part, and your work is not fresh. And so, um, you know, it's, it's very easy to go get into this routine and just shoot, 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 shoot. And you're like, that's okay. You know, it's okay. I don't, you know, when we start, start selling for okay, then I think it's time to, you know, look at, look for something different because it got to stay fresh. You got to stay energetic. Uh, you got to stay connected. Uh, even at my age, you know, I've still got that drive where I want to do better every time I touch my camera. Okay, so okay. how do you deal with the rejection in this business? How do you deal with um, You know, there's, I, I, I think I shared with you earlier, I said that, you know, if you're not in this business long enough uh, and have not gotten rejected, well, if you have not gotten rejected, you haven't been in this business long enough. So uh, I think the longer you're doing this, you're going to always get that one or two client, you know, uh, I, I don't want to say a year. I, I don't get a year to thank God. But I've gotten, to, I've gotten, to, you know, in the past. And, um, and it, it could be, it could be disheartening because as creatives, we are connected to our work. Like, you know, I, the only time you're not connected to is like when you're photographing Santa Claus at the mall. You know, you're just there clicking the button, you know, like, mix. Or you have the DMV. Yeah, there's no creativity behind it. It's set up. Life's not going to change. The stage is not going to change. And you're clicking a button. But when you have a creative aspect to the work that you do, that's part of it. You know, and so it's just or it's just natural that you're going to have feelings about your work when right? somebody says, I don't like it, or, you know, can we do this over, or something like that. You're like, really? And I thought, ooh, great. You know, uh, so there's a couple of ways where I, I'm going to answer this kind of twofold. There's a couple of ways where I try to kind of combat that, you know, to, to you know, because of the past experiences. Um, and, and I'm going to tell you this one particular story. This, this, is, this goes way back. It was the biggest wedding that I've ever photographed. Okay. I've done over 200, 300 weddings in my, in my career. Uh, and uh, but this was a wedding I did in New York City, and uh, had both mayors of New York and Houston at that time. There was only two black mayors in the country, uh, I think, at that time. I mean, two or three, because I think the Detroit turned to black. But anyway, they were there. You know, there was it was a big deal. It was a lot of dignitary. This was, this person was uh, uh, kind of big time in the, in the church. You know how the church gets sometimes. Uh, and they came out to me because they love my work. Okay. And this, I was, this is a rookie mistake. We, we all get we all get big headed. You know, it's like, oh, she loves my work, blah, blah, blah. But is it, what, was it wedding work or what? I mean, what was the work that she really loved? <clears throat> so, as photographers, creators, whatever, um, you gotta learn to speak to what you do. Okay. Because somebody throws some dollars at you and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna do this and do that, but I've never done it before. Or I'm like, I don't know how to do this. You know, I was oh, this is too big, too big for me to even conceive. So, uh, sometimes a good no it will save you a ton of regret. Like, no, that's. I just don't do that. You know, we got to be mature enough or get mature enough to say no. Even if it's a big, yeah, even if it's a big dollar job, sometimes you got to look at it and it takes you out of your character. It takes you out of your character. Don't, don't tell me, don't tell me, no, I'll figure it out. You know, yeah, you can figure it out, but then, the, you know, the, 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 the mistakes or the misery that you can get 
from, you know, doing the job that you're not, you're not capable of doing but don't have, or, or just the relationship is not good, it could be, it's, it, it could be devastating. It could make you want to quit, you know. So I did this wedding, <laughs> did this wedding. She was a bridezilla. She didn't know what she wanted. She wanted everything but nothing. You know, it's kind of hard to explain. She wanted everything, but nothing was not, you couldn't could satisfy this person. They hired a wedding coordinator who was not a wedding coordinator. She was a fashion magazine. I won't name the magazine, you know, but she was a fashion magazine coordinator. I don't know if these people are, you know, following me on these, you know, social media and they're like, I was that. You can talk about me. You know, I, I mean, uh, it is what it is. It's an experience, you know. Uh, and so she, <laughs> so I remember the, you know, so she hired the, this art director who to be her wedding consultant. Had no clue how to schedule the wedding. Two, two receptions. One was at the Tavern on the Green, and if you're New York, you know where the Tavern on the Green is. One was at the Big Giant Church. Two receptions. Okay, not talking about just this, and then the ceremony, the color guards, and everything. It was insane. And it was, I was so naive. You know, this is right now today, everybody's got three or four photographers. You know, we got videographers. That every, you know, today, today's wedding is all big. You know, everyone got two or three. I did a solo. I did that thing solo. It was just photos. Well, this was this was film days. This was film days. Yeah, but I did that whole circuit by myself. Because I didn't know any better. I didn't know any better. Yep. I didn't know any better. And uh, so to kind of wrap up the story, uh, I think I did a pretty good job. In fact, I still have some uh, my old, old portfolio still in my, my office, and I still have some of those pictures because some of the, uh, the people that were in there were iconic. Uh, but. Um, you can't please everyone. Um, you have to understand the visions have to line up and you got to be capable of understanding if you're mature enough and understanding can you deliver. So that was a big lesson there. Like I wasn't able to deliver her vision. I did a good job uh, as a photographer, but her vision was different from what I was capable of, of doing. She had this all this huge idea where I was like, oh, well, you know, how to pull, pull that off. So that being said, you know, for the new photographers, even older photographers, you gotta kind of look at that as if that's outside of my character. And the reason why I say that is that am I, am I do I have the drive or have the ingenuity to create the, what this client wants? Uh, we got into it so bad, and she was ministering. Like, she was ministering. She cussed me, cussed me, cussed me worth for any sailor, any truck driver, anybody, any, any road rage you would ever want to, you know, hear. She cussed me so bad. I was so mad. I ripped, <laughs> I, I was, I was at the studio that I worked at. I ripped the phone. It was so funny. I remember like this was yesterday, not this is 30 years ago. Uh, I ripped the phone off the wall. Like, I ripped it off the wall and threw it. And my, the president of our company didn't know what, what was going on. So he immediately shuts his door thinking I was about to go crazy. <laughs> but yeah, you know, if you want to match, you got to match yourself up with the right clients. You know, not everyone's a good client. Um, you know, today I would just say, hey, because I get a lot of cold calls. You just saw one earlier. Um, I get a lot of cold calls. So I say, well, first of all, this is what I do. Second of all, have you gone to my website? And if you've gone to my website, that represents what I do. Your website or Instagram, whatever you use to show your work, should represent what you do. And when somebody says, well, I, I, I want to hire you to do baby pictures. Do you say baby pictures? Like, that tells me you didn't see any of my work. Because 
I don't have any baby pictures, you know, on my website. So the client has been directed to the right way. And I was going to say a ton of headaches, a ton of headaches. If you tell your client, make sure you love my work. I'm not trying to say this to be all, you know, pompous or anything like that. Love if you, if you just kind of like me or you're just shopping around for the best deal. I'm not, I'm not for you. I, I'm not, I'm not going to be the cheapest. Okay. But I'm not, I'm not the most expensive. There are guys that charge $1,200 for one headshot, you know, or prior to that. You know, I, I, I don't do that, but, but I'm not going to be the cheapest one around. Uh, but I want you to like, you have to look at my words to say, that's, I want to go with them because it's more than just taking pictures. And so that will save me a ton of headache. Uh, you know, making sure that the client or the potential client, uh, understands your artistry, understands how you put things together, understands your vision so that when they work with you, they won't be surprised. For the entire family, you know, you guys probably want to know what equipment you use. What, what's your bag? What's your camera bag? Uh, I know you have a lot. Of so, like, like, what's your, uh, what's your top? What's your top? Yeah. You know, I, I talk about this in my workshops a lot. I think that, you know, um, both my my younger brother and myself, we both say this: the best camera is the camera you have in your pocket or in your hands. You know, so uh, whether it's your phone or DSLR or 35 millimeter film camera, um, um, whatever it is, that night night that's right there, I can still create with that thing. You know, yeah. You know, that, that Leica right there when it was in this hay gig, you know, there's, there's no better camera. That TLR right there. I shot, uh, well, I, I'm getting a Mamiya. I, I, sh I shot when I first got into wedding photography, I had a Mamiya uh, C330 TLR camera. I love that camera. I did headshots with it. I did all kinds of weddings with it. I did all kinds of stuff with media format and stuff. So the best camera you have is what you got. Okay, so <clears throat> to talk about gear is to talk about uh you know, I don't want to ever, you know, put someone in a position where, you know, I'm, I'm saying, I got to get this or I got to get that. Please don't. Work with the budget you got. Okay. Whether you got a thousand dollars or you only got five hundred dollars. Heck, you can get an amazing camera for three hundred dollars. I got a, I still got my Sony A6000. Okay. You know, so I, I, I use that for top down video. And, um, does a fantastic job. I think you can pick them up and use for three fifty, four hundred dollars. I mean, they still sell it, brand new. So you know, because that's it's such a popular camera. Uh, so you got to not look at it based on, you know, you know, megapixels or it does this or it does that. Uh, now my biz, my business has dictated the tools that I. Use. So, if the business dictates the tools that you use, not your desire dictates it. Because I think you lose a lot as a, as a creator, as an artist, when you focus too much on uh, the camera, per se. Uh, one of my favorite photographers, uh, who you should interview uh, in the future, her name is Jessica Williams. Probably one of the best content creators in the Dallas market. Uh, she, her film, her filmatic work is just amazing. Just old school. She uses film cameras. She uses, you know, uh, you know, scanning technique. She shoots digital and all that, but she can create whole campaigns using film. Okay. And, uh, just an amazing young talent, uh, 20 something year old. Uh, she came to one of my very first workshops when she was a teenager. And I gifted, gifted her, uh, with a light light. Uh, because I knew 
she was on you. She was going. She was. She was going. She was. She was going full tilt as a photographer, and she's successful as a photographer. She's an amazing photographer, and so she. That's what I'm talking about. That you use whatever you got. She used whatever it got. I think she shot with a Canon, uh, teal, teal, whatever. Back in the day, when she first started photography, she used it to her business. Told her to to, to up, upgrade. So you know now. I mean, most of my cameras are Sony's. Uh, I use Sony's specifically for video work, and uh, for my portrait and headshot work, I use my uh, Fuji GFX. Yeah, I love that camera. Uh, it's a medium format camera, digital medium format camera. Uh, it gives me incredible dynamic range and so on. And I love the, the, the film simulation it has. So I think the older you get, you know, the, the more you want your stuff to look like film or like it was done organically, not digitally. Uh, so uh, that's the problem with a lot of this. Digital AI and all that stuff like that, where everything is kind of so fake. Uh, I, I like this one. I, I would hope that and this is what most people say when they go on my website. Your stuff looks like it's, it's, it's magazine. It's on those magazine books. Well, that's my client, right? You know, you know, whether it's uh, Texas Monthly or uh, 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 Architectural Digest. Um, uh, so many so different things. I can't even remember. You know, people, I've been at Newsweek, I've been at the Times, and I've been in a, a bunch of magazines. So my stuff, I've always had that mantra to keep myself clean and magazine. And so, and that's, that's just, just, once you find your niche, your tools will uh, direct you in that niche. Don't buy stuff just to buy stuff because I use it or you use it or something like that. Buy stuff to get the job done. With. You got a, a, a again a two hundred dollar camera. If it takes decent images, and you learn how to use that camera to the fullest, and your business starts to grow, and you start doing some different things, that's when you adapt. But don't have, don't 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 develop gear acquisition syndrome. Don't develop that gas because you're gonna be having a closet full of crap. You know, I bought this and I bought that, and now you're using it. You know, so save yourself having a decent camera, Sony, Canon, Fuji, Nikon, they're all good now. And, and, you know, if you were going to buy a camera today, there's not one bad camera. There's not one bad camera. They're, the technology is that good. The only thing I would say you spend the money on is not the best glass you can get. You know, whether it's at uh, 85, 118, or 14. Or a 50 mm one two one four fast glass, using the sharpest glass, you know, and, and, and that that usually the, the, the differential between a really sharp image compared to some of the images you might see that looks kind of like shot through a coat. Oh, okay, excellent. Okay, okay. So, uh, really, my last question, guys, and we'll wrap up here. So, all right, Mister. Can you give me maybe two, three pieces of gems that you've been doing all questionnaire? Two, three pieces of uh, tips, tricks, or game gems to someone in this entire industry. Go with it. Okay. So I don't, I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> uh, you know, I think a lot of Gym number one, or tip number one, be genuine. Be yourself, okay? Don't be mean. Don't be other, other, other photographers. Don't be a marching act. You know, you have to learn how to see with your own eyes. So, so that you can create your own niche, your own style. Uh, a lot of us teach at the workshops and so on, but I do workshops to help open the doors for your creativity, not to mimic my creativity. There's there's no need for another Omar Ramos photographer. There's a need for you, you know, more speech photographer, your creativity, 
you know. And so, uh, learn the basics, you know, you know, uh, the basics are composition, uh, lighting, uh, and, and uh, you know, just understanding how to create a good image. Spend, spend time on that, that, in that foundational, if you're starting out that foundational space, so that you know, you, you figure out what your niche is. Stay genuine to yourself and your unknown. Ask yourself why I got into photography. And this is maybe two or one A, one A, one B. There are two types of photographers. One, well, no, three. <laughs> they're photographers that want to get in with the girls. Okay, because there's there, it's a creepy, it's a creepy aspect to it, but they get into it because they get to shoot photographs, you know, you have to with them. You know, all the girls and stuff like that, you know. So I'm not talking to that. Uh, there's photographers that want to do it just for his money. And there's a lot of this do money in this industry, you know. And, and, and But when you get in, into the money, you know, are you connected to your photography? It's just all, it's all about the money, all about the game, and all that stuff like that. Then there's photographers who are artists who want their work to to transcend who they are. We're going to die one day. You know, all this stuff uh, can get sold off, you know, unless my kids keep it or anything like that. But when they remember you, what are they going to remember you for? Uh, and photography is, is one of the ways that I'm leaving my legacy behind so people can look back and see the and, and see from my work the stories I've been telling. So, you know, become a good storyteller. Learn how to tell stories. Learn how to create a campaign. Uh, you know, I see, especially like with your work, you have this like three dimensional, uh, almost, uh, almost, I don't know, celestial, uh, grand vision when you put your pieces together. That's, that's that's an artist's mindset. So as a photographer, you know, when you're listening, working on your portfolio, your tutorials and stuff like that, one thing I learned early on is to, to try to create a story with the subjects I have. So whether it's uh, steampunk or whether it's uh, high fashion, whether it's uh, swimsuit or whether it's whatever the genre of uh, 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 of, 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 of storytelling you want, you know, learn to be able to pull three to ten images, you know, and, 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 and be able to get it published. Uh, uh, there's such great opportunities now, especially today, where you know, a lot of people can get their stuff published, which is like uh, e magazines, which is, which is perfectly fine. You know, there's some really high end e magazines out there. Uh, that are, are actually on in stores or magazine racks, like Element Magazine, or, uh, you know, there's a bunch of them. I, I just can't think of them all. But, but that's how you get your, you know, you get your stuff out there and stuff like that. Great. You want to get noticed as a photographer. You got to work on some, some good editorial work. Uh, connect with makeup artists, connect with models, connect, connect with fashion designers is even better. Because now you have you have a common goal of getting these all these images out there. So you know, with the internet, with you know, obviously Facebook, Instagram, and so, and social media in general, you can create these great, incredible campaigns without you know, maybe not fund, you might not get the funding for it in the beginning, but you get these campaigns out there, and guess what? These brands see them. Uh, so you can you can do a crazy shoot and just add a Coca Cola. Coin. Right? And like, you don't know if it's Coca Cola to add to it or not, but Coca Cola can see that. And, you know, they have, they have people on, the, on social media just to, to, to look at stuff like that, look at creators to see, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, can we use it? Or, you know, brands out there, you know, I talked about Jessica or a little bit ago, and, you know, she was, she did something for Nike. 
Yeah. Uh, just Jay Taylor. Jay Taylor Photography. Uh, Jay Taylor Studios. Yeah. We got uh, so, so Jessica, I'm sorry, you messed it up. We got you. You know I love you. Uh, but um with that being said, you go out there and create these campaigns so that you know you you you, you create the work you want to do. You create the work you want to do. Create the work you want to get hired for. Okay? Do you want to get hired for, you know, nothing too wrong about it. If you're a baby photographer, infant photographer, then focus on that. Uh, if you're a wedding photographer, you know, then focus on weddings and couples. If you're a family and portraits, focus on family and portraits. I'm a commercial beauty headshot photographer. That's what I focus on. I got to shoot a furniture ad. Um, next week, you know, uh, I got to do some headshots, uh, some branding work for a large AC. This was like, like well, a huge, like commercial AC unit, uh, manufacturing company, but I, I photograph all the executives. So, uh, I'm just like a fifth shoot with them. Um, but you create this look, you create this brand. To, because that's the work we want to get hired. So you go to my website, I want to get hired for the work I put up there, not stuff that, you know, I don't want to be called for, you know, nothing wrong with quinceaneras. I don't need quinceaneras. I mean, if you call me for quinceaneras, I'm going to refer a friend of mine who does quinceaneras, you know, Daniel. <laughs> uh, but if, uh, you know, I've, I've done a lot of different types of work. Mainly because of my clients, who I've done other work for, work, say, hey, can you do this? You know, I love shooting, I love shooting seniors. I still shoot seniors in PM because I think they're all, are, you know, creative and have beautiful ideas. I, I photographed a swimmer, uh, uh, for his senior, two swimmers. And those are, those, those, those photos look like they came out of straight, out of Sports Illustrated. Yeah. So when you get that, when you get that kind of creativity and get that talent, these young people, I love that. I love shooting photography seniors because they come in with their, their gifts. So, uh, so, you know, I, I'm sorry if I mishmashed the, the question, but be true to yourself. Show, don't worry about the gear. Just use the gear that you got. Produce the work you want to get hired for. Okay. Don't do, don't, don't do work or, uh, don't expect, uh, you know, if you want to shoot a car commercial, but you never shot a car commercial, uh, you have practice. And that's the last thing, practice. Yeah, I'm talking about practice. <laughs> I, I practice, and I've been doing this 40 years. I still practice. You know, I practice in my lighting. I practice different uh, ideas, different styles. Stuff so that I'm prepared for when the, when the assignment is called. And I, I did a shoot for, especially a, a video. You know, video is, is a whole new world for me. Uh, and it's, it's been good. I'm so excited about all the video work we've been producing and what we yet to produce. We got some cool stuff that we're going to be filming uh, this year for one of, one of my big clients and so on. But I can practice. I can't be, be showing up there trying to figure things out. I gotta practice now. So I, 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 I've been practicing some interviews, interview styles and getting the gear perfected. Got teleprompter. I got all this stuff so that I'm ready for the assignment when it, when it gets here. And so, um, so practice guys, you gotta practice. You can't just show up. I'm here and, and 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 just expect you know super success because they just you know you got booked for this particular gig or whatnot. You might get you might get booked for the gig, but you're you gonna get booked again. So so you know professionalism is very important. Uh, relationship is very important. Uh, through this whole interview, I'll be here part of the scene kind of theme. Uh, Really, relationships is super, super important. There are people that are giving the opportunity. But once you get that opportunity, make 
full, give them more than what they expected. Because if you just gave them just enough, then you need just another Walmart or another Target or something. Go to any Target and get the same expectations. But you want the Morris Peace experience. What does that what does that mean? So that we're, I work with Morris. I love working with Morris because you gave them more than what they were expecting. You know, I love working with uh, Jessica or, uh, you know, all the, all the photographers that, you know, I know, of, you know, um, and, and respect. You know, there's a reason why they love it. Not necessarily all about the work. It's about the experience that they receive from working with them. So don't lose yourself. Stay true, stay true to, to your artistry. Uh, uh, last thing, last thing. Okay, um, it's hard to be. It's hard to be a Swiss Army knife in this industry. Meaning, you can't do it all. Yeah, you know, you can't be an excellent wedding photographer. You can't be an excellent portrait photographer. You can't be an extra 